There was a couple of white entrepreneurs in the States who saw a business opportunity and locked up the one and only lacrosse factory in Cornwall and took 100% of their sticks so no one else could have them. And then they distributed them as they saw fit. A few went to New York, a few went to Boston. Many of them went to Baltimore. None of them came to Syracuse. We were in the market for the few sticks that were being made. When I was a coach's kid and I wanted a wooden stick. I went to the reservation for a number of years because we had a new limited amount of wooden sticks being made on the res. The best stick, best wooden stick in the world today is still made on the reservation. Unfortunately, it's not used very much because it's brittle, it's expensive, it's rare, it's a treasure. It's hung on the wall, it's right here, it's made in Hickory. So my dad had put me in the car and went up to Canada and I go to this factory and they had some 60 or 70 natives carving these pieces of Hickory. Fascinating process. We can't get into it tonight, but it's, it's a fascinating lost art. And I would wander through piles of sticks and my dad would say, go ahead, pick out one. Pick out a stick. You pick it up and each <coughs> stick was different. You had it in your hand. A great All-American lacrosse player by the name of Eamon McEnany, uh, who once coached with before me, told me to pick out a stick was like picking out a girlfriend. And you had to treat it just as gently until it became yours. Uh, it, it was a process and a love of the wood, of the hickory that held you held in your hand. It's also brittle. And they were unique, they were no tool like. And you broke one end. I used to name mine after my girlfriend. And then somebody would step on it and break it. And there you were. Your game was gone, unless you had another stick. And if you were lucky to have two sticks, the other one wasn't like the first one. And it was subject to the weather, and the, the gut on it got soft and rain and play. And the stick got saturated with water became very temperamental. We would come off the field on a rainy day with some money. We were muddy and sweaty. And we were given a towel to take a shower with. You didn't take a shower first without a clean towel. You wiped off your stick first <laughs> to save it from the abuse it had taken. And then you took a shower. And then you used a towel that your favorite stick was uh, wrapped The painting I, I want to be probably fascinated by this painting. Because the guy looks like me. No. He's got a lot of native blood in him. You can tell by his high cheekbones. That's my father. And if you collect sticks, and I hope you don't, more for me. This is a treasure. This is like the Mona Lisa of sticks. It was done by an odd dog. His name was Lazor. And I learned on this stick. Because my father had this stick when he played at Syracuse that he bought from Mr. Lazor <coughs> on the reservation. Mr. Lazor died in his craft died many years ago. This stick is that stick. The stick I learned on it was my father's stick. My father was my coach. My father was Jim's coach. My father was Warren's coach. That's Warren's painting. Warren did that painting in appreciation my father's interested in bringing him from the Onondaga Res to the hill where he got a straight A record and developed his great artistic ability. And as a senior in school, painted this picture, my dad from memory, with this a lolly stick and presented it to him at his graduation day. So you can see this guy's many facets.
crabbing or fishing net or something. I asked what it was. It's a lacrosse net. What's lacrosse? That was my introduction. And then I was lucky enough to get my sophomore year to have Roy's father as the defensive backfield coach in football. And he said, you're going to play lacrosse. You move pretty good backward. <laughs> And I was going to play defense, but they had a rule in those days. They, they kind of flattened lacrosse out a little bit. If anybody was near the ball, you could hit them. I wasn't a good stick handler, but boy, I cleared the field and I took my time picking the ball up. And the first lacrosse game I played in was maybe the most unusual and memorable. I still hadn't learned all the rules. But Orrin was the goalie. This was my sophomore year. Or Orrin's a goalie, and he had just had a knee operation. He had a cast from his thigh to his ankle. And he's our goalie. He had his long, shaggy pants on to hide the fact that he had the cast. So before the game, we all get around to Orrin, and we surround him, and we bring him out, we put him in the net. <laughs> this is to disguise the fact that he can't walk. <laughs> and that he's not going to be able to clear the ball. So, okay. We're, we're into the game, about seven or eight minutes. Somebody gets a, a breakaway, and I'm back there in defense, and he comes by me, and he whips a shot in there, or sticks his leg up, boom! <laughs> It hits the cast and goes up past midfield. <laughs> and the guys, are, oh my God, the guy's got a wooden leg. <laughs> so from that time on, they, they stopped the game. And Roy's father says, well, he's our only goalie. What are we going to do? So they put like a thousand pounds of cushioning around the cast. So Orrin looked like, you know, that Christmas tree story where the little guy in the snowsuit falls down, can't get up? That was Orrin. So that was my first game. But I've learned to respect what happens in lacrosse. What the teamwork is just so fantastic. And the stick, the only reverent experience of my life just about was when we went down to pick out sticks. Roy's father brought me down to the reservation and I was going to pick my own stick, you know, because I could back up fast and I could knock people down. So I'm going to get my own stick, you know. And it took so long to get used to it, to be able to cradle a ball and throw accurately and do all the things that seem second nature now to everybody. It was quite a trial, but that experience of owning that stick, and I took it everywhere with me. If I went on vacation, I'd take my stick, and I'd create a lot of ball, get used to that. So I did that for years until I could finally catch and throw the ball a little bit. But I really envy these two. They've been connected with lacrosse their whole lives, and they can talk to any, any end of it at all. And all I know about it is what it did for me and the pleasure I derived from it and how much fun it is to watch it today because it's much more sophisticated and smoother, but it still has that rhythm, that beautiful dance and the kinetics of, of an athlete connected to this little apparatus, that little stick that does so much and gives us such great pleasure.